There's no mailbag today. I have sad news. Oh, what? I do. It's a uh, member Chuck Shepard. Does that name ring a bell with you? It vaguely? rings a bell. It should. He was the man who, in 1988, started the News of the Weird column. Oh, oh, which yeah, 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 yeah. Was both inspiration and fertile stealing ground for <laughs> for uh, this is true, really. Back in the day. Oh wow! When did we first do this? Is truly news. Came on second time. We were there. So late, early nineties. Well, let's think about that because the second time we were there, you you told me that Drew was going to be born and. No. Yeah, because, no, I thought Drew was born. When was Drew born? Oh, Drew was born at KS. KSTP. Yeah, oh, but my. you told me Ann was present. Don't mind. It came don't on. mind about this. This will just be a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but that was, yes. So it was a KMOM. So would have been the, yeah, because when were we at KSTP? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> okay, 87, I was at LOL. I cannot remember any of this crap. Let's go with so about the time he started this, we started this is true, really. Yes. And that's eventually true. we found Chuck Shepard's News of the Weird column, which was inspiring and a, a great thieving ground. It was. It, it was absolutely funny. But the man was funny and he had that weird look at things. Yes. So yeah. he did it. He did that column from 1988 through 2017, okay. and um, he died on September 8th. Oh, rest in peace, man. Yeah, weird peace. <laughs> Strange. Does that, does that remind you of the time? Strange, uh, bizarre, weird. We interviewed uh, William Gaines, the publisher of Mad Magazine, just weeks before okay. his death. That should date you on how old we are. Yeah. Right. But we found out it was his, what, it was birthday or the anniversary? What was it? It was, um, must have been the anniversary of Mad Magazine. Something, or near it. Yeah. Yeah. So we called him up, said, hey, let's have a talk. And he was so He was pleased. hilarious. Yes. And fun and polite to two people that he had no reason to be. No. And I, I loved him. Well, I love my favorite part. I've met us, and I don't even want to be polite to us. <laughs> I, I, I'll, uh, I remember talking to him, and he goes, thanks for doing this, guys. You know, it was just well, this. See, now we nice to be remembered. See, for those of you that think we're just jerks, and, and don't get me wrong. Yeah, we're just um, jerks. We are. Every once in a while, because we did the same for Tony Oliva's birthday, just because he's my favorite baseball player. Yep. Because he stole his brother's name. Otherwise, he would have been Pedro Oliva. <laughs> And I wouldn't have cared. <laughs> but he was Tony Oliva. He was a terrific right fielder. I'll, okay, I'll give you. He was the second best right fielder of his era. Yep. Grudgingly, I will give Clemente the top spot. Because when you know when you die a martyr's death, it's really hard to move mm. that needle. Right, um, right. But Tony O wore number six. And that's my favorite number. Because I was his first name's Tony. His number was six. I'm Tony. I was born in June. I see. A six month. And if you add three sixes together what do you get a bad movie 18 uh, June so 18. everything okay. everything about me is 666 six, six. <laughs> i'll say and right I hate now the way your head spins around when you're mad and and i'm pretty sure right now that all of the fundamentalist types that have listened to us are dead or are <laughs> freaking out yeah absolutely they started the prayer chain already but we saw so on his birthday we called him up and we got mudcat grant Oh. And, and if you know, Tony's been here since he was a child, the early 60s. Yeah. We got um, Zoilo Versailles, too. Zoilo was on, Mudcat, yeah. but it was when Mudcat was on. And Zoilo didn't live long after. I think we killed really? people. A couple of years, yeah. It was yet. <laughs> I think we're an infectious, oh, man, the communicable disease. disease. So if you're listening, um, good luck. Yeah. If we uh, mention your name, Take great, but it's the only time I remember us ever losing control of an entire show because for one entire segment, I don't think you and I said a word. No, but Mudcat and Tony O did the whole thing. They just took off in Spanish. Mm. Chico, que pasa, que pasa, and Chico, afterwards, and then it was gone. Yeah. And afterwards, Tony, his wife, Mudcat, and Zoilo all thought it was yeah. just such a sweet thing to do. And it's like, are you nuts? <laughs> I got to. This is for real. I got to hang out with my hero. <laughs> it's kind of like when we get, remember we got to interview Lucas Tello's daughter. Oh yeah, he I was remember. a hoot. 
Yes. Because yes. Lou was, oddly enough, Lou was a normal one in that duo, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. He was isn't, a normal one. Isn't that odd? Um, beca- Yeah, because he was the... He was the Pratt Falls He was guy. the foil. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Bud was off the rails most of the time. <laughs> but it was great talking with her because, again, it's a guy I... Uh, you know, Martin Lewis are probably fine. Yeah, yeah. I like Dab and Costello. I did a whole. I actually took a class on them in college. Believe it or not, there was one. There was um, an Abbott and Costello. No. Oh, there was a class in college. Hudson and Landry. No. no it's- <laughs> Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> Hudson and Landry. Uh, Ajax liquor store. There. <laughs> <laughs> or no, what, Ajax Airlines was that the first Ajax one? Airlines. You better hold that plane. <laughs> Why? Because I'm the pilot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, a, a, let me ask you. Let, as long as we're doing this, let me ask you. Hey, arrows, ole. <laughs> Ace, you were this great is, last night. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Ace. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but let me ask you this question because I, I don't think I've ever asked you this question. Mm-hmm. Uh, of all the interviews we did, which one sticks out? Those, in a heartbeat, those are the first ones that jumped to my head. Okay. Um, actually, the Tony O one just sticks because it was so um, sweet. It he, really was. And then I was stunned years later when I took our when the kids we took a vacation to Orlando. Okay, so we went for Disney World, but Mom and I actually wanted to go see a Twins training camp thing. <laughs> and it was the first week of, when we got there it was the first week of camp, so there were no games yet. Okay, but we watched. That's when I found out Jeff Reardon was a how do I say this politely a dick a jerk an ass. <laughs> My cute little blonde daughter asked him for his autograph, and he said, I can't right now. I will later when I get done with my workout. Take about 15 minutes. So we waited, and we waited, and we watched him go through his stuff. Then he left by the far gate and ran back into the building. Oh. I could give him the benefit of the doubt that he just forgot. Yeah, well, that would have been me. She was the only little blonde girl that asked him. She only the blonde girl hanging around by the fence the entire time he was out there. Yeah, giant poop head. That was also when I looked down the fence and I thought, oh, my God, Tony Oliva's bigger than I thought. Oh, really? He was standing next to Kent Herbeck. Yeah, yeah. They were the same freaking size. I, I would never have thought that. Kid you not. I If you watch him, he doesn't, when you watch him in the outfield, yeah. he, doesn't, he doesn't look like an overly big outfielder. Well, he doesn't move like he's a large man. He do- no, well, of course he's gotten you know with the knees are gone now, but well, yeah, but I so mean, when not he was the exercise, playing. but he he was, and he, you know, you never got the idea, but he had he had the shoulders. Yeah, that's true. And he was fairly tall, but I he never stood out. And I look and I go, okay, Herbert's a big guy. Yeah. Even yep. as a rookie, when he before he had bulked up a little, he is a big man. Well, how how big was he compared to Bob Ellis? Allison was shorter. What? Shorter but stockier. Allison was my football coach my first year. His son was on my team. If I remember right, Bob was. I thought I Bob was pictured, like six four. I always pictured Bob Allison as being shorter and stockier, and Tony being angler, much more. Okay. Uh, okay. Lanky. I, I hear you. I hear you. Anyway, all that comes from Chuck Shepard being di- dying last <laughs> week. So, oh, so I'm a little bit sad and a little bit happy. Of all the interviews we did, what did yep. you? What stood out for you? I mean, we've done more than a couple. Seinfeld. Here. Hmm. Do you remember how he, he could not figure out why Minnesotans were so interested in the weather? Uh-huh. That's also he, the, he he was, that was the also show. the first time I ever heard him talk. That's the first time I ever heard anyone consider the Skyway system. Yeah. Like it's like that gerbil thing. <laughs> the habit trail. He couldn't think of it, though. <laughs> it's like that gerbil thing. Is it habit trail? That's it. It's, <laughs> in the winter, you people are like hamsters. <laughs> Yes, very much. That you're right. He what was, is it about the habit trail? He was uh, funny. He was. He, I enjoyed him a lot. What a sweetheart! And this was just actually. As, you want to know the best? The best. The interview that really sticks out in my head was a K mom. Hold it. Let me think. It, it wasn't interview. Goldie, was it? No. Nope. Was it Goldsworthy? Mm-mm. That was a good interview, but no, wasn't Tom. <laughs> it wasn't Tom either because he got upset with us. Who uh, Landry? No, no, Landry. But that was a good interview. He that could was say, a very, yeah, 
he said, I, I never thought I could sing, but they sang in my ear and then I sang it back to them and I was on, on key. And <laughs> he explained to us that the catch means different things in different cultures. <laughs> Depending on who you are, to if us, you're a Vikings fan, to like, us it's Drew Pearson beating up Nate Wright. Yeah, to him it was Dwight Clark beating up their whole defense. <laughs> uh, but no, oddly Seinfeld. they were both in the same game. Yeah, not I mean, at the, the same, same time, but they're both in the NF- NFC. Well, well yeah, was, they're both in the NFC. Didn't it happen the next week or something like that? The no, Dwight Clark I, catch? No, that was years later. Oh, that was, was Mon- it? That was the Montana era. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. They yeah, were still right. in the Joe, right. Joe Joe John. Hayden, Hadel, <laughs> that little Hadel. Long... No, that was <laughs> no. San Diego. Yeah, that's God, right. I remember old football players. <laughs> you don't remember your own name. I don't remember my children or my name, but I. But uh, Seinfeld just killed me because he, you know, I was trying to read the weather and he was just feeding me a ration of it, and I'm going, I'm laughing. He finally goes, "You can't even speak. Give me that." And he goes, he looks at it, he goes, "There's going to be weather. Deal with it." <laughs> but. What's okay, there are two sports interviews that stand out besides okay. Tony O. Okay. When Don Baylor came in, because I have, I mm. had, okay, now I, as a young man, was actually in a Minnesota Viking locker room. Okay. I shook hands with Alan Page and my arm disappeared. Right. Right. I shook hands with Carl Eller and half of my body I couldn't see. He was just that, that big. So tall. Um, Bob Lertzema was very big and, uh, and fun, even back Lertz. then. Lertz is fun. Um, so I know Baylor, I have never seen a man as big as Don Baylor, as massive. Hmm. Because remember, he brought he was wearing a Super Bowl ring. Okay. And he took it off, and I picked it up, and for one, I almost got a hernia. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty sure if I'd have worked at it, I could have worn it as a wristwatch. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was one. And the other was it came on when we talked to Dave Gagne. Oh, after really? He, uh, after he spit up a goal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We gave him a great ration of. Sh- I mean, <laughs> we did. We get. We were just feeding it to him. Yeah, we were. And he took it pretty. And now, uh, understand, right? We're two little n- nobodies. Yeah. In a tiny little radio station that nobody cares about. Yeah. So much and so that it doesn't exist. It's anymore. gone now, which is it shouldn't be, but it. Mm-hmm. Well, proper management always helps. Anyway, yes. and he <laughs> finally goes, guys, I've apologized this for the last five minutes. Isn't that enough? He didn't have to talk to us at all, and yet he did every week. Oh, yeah. He would he come was, on and talk Kanye to us our great. goodies. That was didn't fun. we do some stuff with him uh, when we got to KS, too? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we continued Early that. Early on, we got to do a little bit. Yeah, for at the beginning, we did, and of course, he was gone. But Yeah. but it was And then we, that's when we figured out that G-A-G-N-E is, is pronounced a lot of different ways. Yes. There's Gagne, Gagne, mm-hmm. and Gagne. Yes. Mm. I don't even want to know what they do with Smith. It's my Smith. Smith. Smith's my Smith. Well, there. See, that was way longer than. Yeah, but it's okay. That's way longer than any mailbag we could possibly come up with. On to the serious crap. Look at that. Even with Chuck Shepard dying, we still got weird. Good for us. <laughs> Come right, on. And Karen what? Falloon. What about Karen Falloon? <laughs> Boom, Falloon. We had some sort of <laughs> bet with her. So the poor morning weather lady on Channel 5, who did weather for all the red, Channel 5's affiliate radio stations. Yeah, yeah. We Remember, we did a, a some sort of bet thing with her, and we actually won, which amazes me to no answer. We um, won a bet? and she We had couldn't even do, win the bet with the Green Bay Packers. And she had to know we had to go serve people in Viking jerseys in Green Bay. That was entertaining as hell. Um, or were we in Milwaukee? We, we were, were in, in Milwaukee. Milwaukee. At a club in Milwaukee. Yeah, yeah. We weren't abused at all. Um, <laughs> they were great. They were very good. And Karen had to do that. This is true. Really, that day with us. Oh yeah, you don't remember this? Oh no, no, I don't. I just it was, barely remember. And I, that's all I remember because it was the rest of it. I don't. All I remember is laughing. Oh, okay, okay. I have. Balloon was a good sport. And she and she was sharp. Yep. Yeah. Most TV people we kind of shied away from because. Mostly, if it wasn't written down, they couldn't do much. It was very funny. Though. There were they, others, though. They Ron, have... Remember, Ron Majors was on once. Oh, Majors was great. From Chicago already. Yeah. Um, yep. Paul Majors, I almost killed me once. <laughs> I was leaving work. He was late to come into work. And holy crap. And it wasn't even KSTP. It was WLOL. Was, right. <laughs> you were filling in for Heinz and Berglund. Yeah. And I'm about to die. 
<laughs> because well, of she, that guy. But I was going to get hit by a very expensive car. So, oh, yes. Oh, my. But yeah, those are the loon I remember. Okay. And the first time we got. Oh, quick <laughs> news guy, John McDougal. McDougal. Yeah. The first time we got John to actually laugh on the air. And it didn't happen very often, but the first time was something with the Pope. And I said, do you want me to call him? you have his number? Sure. One. <laughs> That's right. And I remember him just. And Scott <laughs> looks at me with big eyes and he snickers and off we go. It was yeah. perfect. Perfect. <laughs>